So here's the right, basic idea, big ideas. You can approximate functions using lines. That's the big idea. Okay, so you have some sort of curvy function. There's a curvy function. You've got some point A, that's the point A, comma f of A, y equals f of x. Okay, so here's the big idea. If you find the tangent line at x equals a, f of x is going to be approximately equal to your tangent line for x close to a. So there's the picture. And the idea is if you're sort of close-ish to a, the tangent line and the function are close-ish together. Does that idea make sense? It's for any kind of curve, right? But how close you have to be <coughs> depends on which curve you're looking at, right? So it's different <coughs> for different curves. If the curve is sort of almost a line, you can maybe be close enough with a bigger window. Does that make sense? And, and it will be different in different places, right? The tangent line, so suppose that A was equal to 5, for example. The tangent line might be close to the function at 5. The tangent line at 5 is close to the function, so you can use the tangent line to estimate the function near 5. But if I cared about A equals 100, i got to find a different tangent line because the behavior may be very, very different out at 100. That's what I mean by close, and close can be different for different curves. Yeah, close to the value of a. So like if you can, you can use, for example, a tangent line at a equals 1 to estimate function values near 1, that kind of stuff. And you'll learn actually in calculus 2, you'll learn a way to approximate a function using a polynomial. So you add in more terms, and it's going to get more accurate more quickly. And this thing is called a linear approximation, so we're going to get a formula for it, but the formula just comes from the tangent line. So you have a point. And that point is a comma f of a. So the goal is to find the tangent line. So if this is your point, what is your slope of your tangent line? Yeah, how do you find the slope of the tangent line? Use the derivative. And you care about it at a specific point, so you plug in A. <coughs> okay, then plug your information into your point slope formula. Y minus Y1 equals M X minus X1. So that's Y minus F of A equals F prime of A times X minus A or y equals f of a plus f prime of a, x minus a. <coughs> Your book calls this L of x equals that same thing. It's the linearization of f at a. That just means find the tangent line. At that specific point, x equals a. It's just another way of saying find the tangent line. Do you understand what happened from here to here that I just added the f of a over and then gave you an equation? But I think what it might be easier to do is just say, oh, this thing is saying find a tangent line. So what I need to do is find a tangent line to this function at this point. And then you can use that linearization to estimate your function at close by values.
So in many ways, this, this section actually is really not very hard because it is just finding tangent lines. That's really all it is on some level. Okay, so let's actually do one. You guys ready? Okay, so find the linearization of this function at A equals one and use it to estimate the numbers 3.98 and 4.05. And are these approximations overestimates or underestimates? So you can figure out that last part from a picture, but first step is find the linearization. So find the tangent line at A equals one. So that's our X value of our point. How would you find the Y value? Plug it in. So that'd be root one plus three or root four, which is two. So we have the point one comma two. The next thing we need is the slope. How do you find that? So. Derivative, yep. Okay, so that would be one half stuff to the new power of, and I made a typo there, it should be x plus three still, to the power of negative one half, and then technically you apply the chain rule because the x plus three is inside your root, but what's the derivative of x plus three? That's the one time you can get away without the chain rule and I won't notice. So f prime of x is 1 over 2 root x plus 3. Yes, by that? Okay, you care about the slope when you plug in what number for x? 1, great. So 1 over 2 root 4. So what's that slope? 1 over 4, great. So now find your tangent line. Y minus Y1 equals M, X minus X1. Some of you still don't try to use this way. It really is easier. Just give it a shot. Like, it's not that bad. Y minus 2 equals a quarter X minus 1. But in this case, you the linearization implies you have to get Y by itself. So you have to put these in slope-intercept form. If I ask for the tangent line, yes, but for linearization, you've got to solve for y. So that's going to be 1 quarter x minus a quarter plus 8 quarters. So what, 1 quarter x plus 7 quarters. Plus seven quarters. Okay, so that's the linearization. Okay, and so the idea is that root x plus 3 is about equal to 1 quarter x plus 7 quarters for x is close to 1. Does that idea make sense? The root function is approximated by this thing for x is close to 1. So how would you estimate root 3.98. So the first thing you have to say is that this is plugging in x's that are close to 1, and your function that you have is x plus 3. So first of all, let's write this as 0.98 plus 3. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then to estimate 0.98 plus 3, you just do the tangent line with 0.98 plugged in. 1 quarter times 0.98 plus 7 quarters. And use a calculator to do that, but you can think that back in the day when calculators weren't so ubiquitous that this is something you could have done without a calculator, because it really is just multiplication and division, right? It's just basic arithmetic operations. If you're given enough time and you had patience and you were a good human calculator, you could do that, right? So that's approximately 1.995. And does that make sense as to what you think it should be? Because 3.98 is almost 4, right? So root 3.98 should be almost 2, right? Okay, how would you estimate root 4.05? Oh, 
what would you express 4.05 as? 1.05 plus 3, and that'd be 0.05 plus 3. And that'd be about equal to 1 quarter times 1.05 plus 7 quarters, which is about 2.0125. You couldn't use 4 or plus 05 because of that x plus 3? Because of the x plus 3, yeah. There would be a different... I mean, let me finish this, and I'll tell you how to use another way to do this. You could change some stuff around, and you could use this, you're using numbers to your 4. Yep, that's also possible. Okay, and then the last part of this said, are they over or under estimates? So over or under. So what does root x plus 3 look like? It's a square root function shifted how? To the left 3. About like that, right? Ish. It kind of curves and it's open downward-ish, right? We have a tangent line at 1, which is going to look like that, right? So you got those estimates by plugging those numbers into the tangent line, which means you found the number like right there and you found the number like right there. So are those above or below what the actual values are? Above. They're above, so these are overestimates. Would under bring us under the curve? Under would be the case if your tangent line was below the curve. So the thing is, these values are found by plugging a number into the tangent line. They're the y values on the tan line. Those values actually find a linear line? Yeah. The, this thing we plug it into y equals mx plus b, you're on the linear part. Okay, because the actual value is on the curve, and the value we found is the value on the tangent line. The tangent line is above the curve, which means the y value there is above the y value there, which means these are over the actual values versus if the tangent line would have been below the curve, they would have been under the actual values. It has to do with the way the curve shapes. Like if it kind of curves downward, it's called its concavity, but we'll discuss that later. If it curves kind of downward, then you're going to have overestimates. But if we had a parabola, then these would have been underestimates because the values on the tangent line are under the curve. It has to do with where the tangent line is relative to the original. So it will always be over or under. Yeah, it won't be. I mean, it won't be both. You're saying that with a, with a square root function, it will always be over. With a square root function, it's always going to be over. With a parabola, it would always be under. With things like cubics, it'll change in the middle. So it depends on the location sometimes. But for these things, it should be pretty obvious where it is. Things like parabolas and square root functions are more obvious than so others. What you should know is that if you sketch a picture of the curve and draw the tangent line on, if the tangent line is above the curve, then it's an overest, and if it's below, then it's an under. If it was a negative reflected over the x-axis, then it would be, an, yes. If it was like a negative out in front, then you would definitely have underestimates. Yep. Okay. So another way to do this problem would have been to, say, take the curve or the function f of x equals root x and find the linearization at a equals 4. Does that make sense that that's the same thing? As your, your equation is going to be different, but this will allow you to plug in numbers that are close to 4. So in that case, you could actually plug in 3.98 and you could plug in 4.05 for your x's. So it wasn't that weird x plus 3 business going on. Okay. So most of the stuff you're going to do is just be like find some linearization. So physicists commonly use linear approximations to simplify a nonlinear function. Find the linear approximation of sine, and I meant to specify at a equals 0. I have to tell you what number, otherwise it'll be different. <clears throat> okay. So if a is equal to 0 f of a is f of 0, which is sine of 0 is 0. OK, 
Okay, so we have the point 0, 0. Okay, the slope of your tangent line will be f prime of 0. So what's f prime of x? So f prime of 0 will be cosine of 0, and that's 1. one. So y equals x? Uh-huh. So y equals x. That is the linearization of a cosine at 0. And that should convince yourself that that's true, okay? So sine looks like this, right? If you're close to 0, do you buy that it's like a y equals x-ish thing? Yeah. What, would, what if I gave you y equaled cosine x? And I said, find the linearization at a equals zero. <coughs> what would that probably be? A horizontal line would be y equals one. So when you're close to zero with the sine function, you're close to y equals x. And when you're close to zero with the cosine function, you're close to y equals one. So, okay. All righty. So use linear approximation to estimate root 99.8. So first of all, what's your estimate going to be close to? This is going to be about equal to 10, and it should be a little bit below 10, right? Okay. So what you have to do is pick your function and pick your a value. So a should be something that when you plug it in, this works out nicely. And so... I think the easy way to do this one is to pick f of x equals root x. And what's a close by value for a where you can work out the root of x nicely? 100. 100. As in what's the x value? And then Mary Kate, you were saying what the y value was, right? And so in that case, f of a will equal root 100 or 10. Okay, now just find the linearization of that function at this point. So f prime of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So 1 over 2 root x. So f prime of 100 is 1 over 2 times root 100 which is equal to what? 1 mm -hmm. 20th. So y minus y1 equals m, <coughs> x minus x1. So y minus 10 equals 1 20th, x minus 100. Uh-huh. So y minus 10 is 1 20th of x minus uh, 5. Do you buy that? Mm -hmm. So y equals 1 20th x plus 5, yes? So that's your linearization. And it works for values that are, so x is close to 100. Does that make sense? Because of what I chose my a to be, we have that 1 over 20x plus 5 is about equal to root x near x equals 100. So how would you estimate root 99.8? What would you plug in for x? Nope, even easier. x is near 100. Just plug in 99.8. That will equal, be approximately equal to 1 20th times 99.8 plus 5. 
which is 9.99. Okay, so Mary Kate, you had a pretty good point. Okay, so what were you trying to say about plugging in, making that into what were you saying? Okay, so 100, can I say 100 plus negative 0.2, would that be all right, same thing? Okay, if you want to do it that way, you have to use the function f of x equals root 100 plus x, and you have to do this at a equals 0. So in this case, the numbers you're plugging in are numbers that are close to 0, versus that one I can plug in numbers close to 100. So there are lots of ways to do it right, and your book might do it differently. But you should arrive at the same answer. So the tangent line is going to look different for this thing. Actually, will it? That's a good question. Yes, it will have to look different. I'm not sure. The slope might not change, but the y-intercept might. I don't know. I, I, I plead the fifth. I'd have to work it out to know. What is that? What? A equals zero. A equals zero. Yep. The point is, is if you choose... If you choose to plug, if you want to plug in numbers that are close to zero, you've got to get close to 100 in a different manner. So that's how that works. I think my pencil is dying. That's why it's making bad writing. It takes 30 seconds. You get 30 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. Find a linear pro yeah, Apple. Find a linear approximation of this function and. We're going to discuss how you would do the second part, but the second part requires a calculator. So first of all, find the points, and then find the slope. What, um, if you're going to get the derivative of this, what rule do you have to use to get the derivative? Product. Product. So go ahead and do that. Take the derivative. We'll give my Apple Pencil 30 seconds more to charge. Okay? So see if you can find the tangent. See if you can find the equation of the linearization, and then we'll worry about the accuracy. Ready, set. Go. <coughs> Come on, you too, Jesse. Go. So why does the stylus need to be charged? Because it pairs to the device so that the Apple, the iPad doesn't recognize my hand resting on it as a writing utensil. Oh. It's really sweet. So that's why it needs to charge. Other simpler style, I don't need to charge. Did you guys get the same thing for your linearization? I pulled e to the x out. But it should give you the same answer, shouldn't it? Yeah. You're going to get 1 times 1 minus 0, which will be the same thing, right? Do you see what I'm saying? I believe you. Okay, you believe me. Okay. Okay, so that's the linearization. So find the values of x for which the approximation is accurate to within 0.1. So what this means is that the difference between the function minus the tan line is off by less than 0.1. This is a margin of error function. Yeah, it's going to tell us like what x is give us accuracy to within this amount. Does that make sense? Now, you could, 
you can be off in two ways, right? You could be an overestimate or an underestimate. Does that make sense? So this could also be bigger than negative 0.1. Exactly. So if you can see how far you can go in either direction. So the way you'd figure this out is you take negative 0.1 less than the function is e to the x cosine x minus the tangent line, which is x plus 1 less than 0 0.1. So there you go. And that's, you'd have to graph this to figure out what x's make that happen. So how you would do that, this is kind of like saying these are the y values that you have. So you'd set your y window to have a lowest value of y equals negative 0 0.1 and a highest value of y equals 0 0.1. And then you figure out how much can you zoom in on the x's to make your picture lie within those values. Yeah? So on a quiz like that? I can't give you that question on a quiz with a calculator. I mean, there's no way I can do that. There, it's just not possible. What I could do is make you give me the inequality, right? Like I could just say, give me the inequality that tells me this is true. Okay, but, but the point also, even the specifics of making your calculator do this kind of stuff are different from calculator to calculator. It's really annoying to go through everybody's different syntaxes. As a, so if I knew that you all had TI-89s, which I did in my AP Calc class, I could say, okay, you all do it this way. But we don't make you buy those calculators because they're expensive, even the vintage ones. So the point is, is that this works. I don't know if that's true. They've been around $200 since forever. You can buy yourself a decent smartphone for that. Yes, you can. I got my Inspire at Walmart for 180. Yeah, so that's what I mean, the, and, and the Inspires are even fancier than 89s. So between those X's, approximately, you have this amount of accuracy. It's a relatively wide interval, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, you know, almost one on either side of zero, isn't it? Okay. It's not the domain, it's just saying, because uh, the, the, the function has domain all real numbers. This is the numbers that when you do the actual minus the estimate, which is the same thing as your error, it's less than 0 0.1. And actually taking the absolute value even. It's the difference between the actual number you get when you plug this number into the function versus plugging into the tangent line. It's how much you're off by. So in this case, if you plug in numbers within that interval, you're off by less than a tenth. Okay, Jesse and then Natalie. So that between the intervals, that's what you would get if you actually had a calculator. Otherwise, you would stop yes. with the inequality. Otherwise, you stop with the inequality. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now, another thing you can use to estimate stuff are these things called differentials. And it's actually pretty interesting that this works as well. Okay, so draw a zoomed-in picture of a curve. So we have something like this. X, X plus delta X. Make a tangent line at X. Okay, so this is your curve, y equals f of x, that's your tangent line. So does that make, what is the slope, or this tangent line, does it make sense? Its slope can be expressed as dy over dx. It's at a specific point, but. Okay, I'm gonna draw two triangles in there. I'm gonna draw just one triangle over this way and up to there. Okay. Now, does it make sense that the base of that triangle is delta x? Okay. Now, the height of that triangle <coughs> is delta y. Does that make sense as well? Okay. 
delta x is how much did the x change from one x to the x, right? Delta y is how much did the y change from first x to second x, right? For, yeah, first y when you plug in first x, the second y you plug in second x, yep, okay. All right, now slope is rise over run, right? And when you first see slope, you see lots of triangles drawn. Does that make sense? So if I have this straight line, that makes this triangle. Do you buy that? Now think about that slope as dy over dx. dy is the rise, and dx is the run, right? So in that triangle, so dy equals rise. So this is dy, right? This part here to here is dx. And do you see that dx is the same thing as delta x? Do you buy that that's true? And that's going to be true no matter what kind of picture I draw. Let me finish, then you can ask a question. Does it make sense that dy is approximately equal to delta y? Close. Yeah. Close. And of course, the, the smaller your little delta x is, <coughs> the smaller that difference between dy and delta y is going to be. And here is sort of a funky thing. You say, you know dy over dx is f prime of x, right? Do you buy that? You can kind of separate this notation and think about dx as being this thing you can multiply both sides by. And you can say that dy over dx, dy is equal to f prime of x times dx. Nope, it wouldn't be f prime of y. Nope, definitely not. If you have like y equals sine x, you say dy dx is cosine x, or you say f prime of x is cosine x, right? You don't say f prime of y. You would say f prime of y if the variable inside the function were y's. So that thing is called a differential. And so dy estimates delta y. So a way to estimate the change in y is to take the derivative, plug in some specific x value, and then multiply by the change in x. And what we're going to do, I'm going to do with one example, is compare them for some specific functions and also convince you that doing this differential thing is easier than just finding delta y. But you at least buy from the picture that dy and delta y are the same thing-ish. Same thing-ish? Same thing-ish. They're close together, right? Okay, so here let's do a specific with some numbers. Okay, so compare the values of delta y and dy if x changes from 2 to 2.05. So to find delta y, you have to do f of 2.05 minus f of 2, as in find the second y minus the first y. So that'll be 2.05 cubed plus 2.05 squared plus, I made a boo-boo, that should say minus. What were you going to say, Natalie, sorry? It's 2.05 cubed squared. Thank you. Minus 2 times 2.05 plus 1, minus, what you got to do next? Two. Plug in 2. 2 cubed plus 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 1. And you get to go punch a lot of buttons in a calculator, right? It's about equal to 0 0.717625. Does that make sense? Just do, to find delta y, find second y minus first, that's all that delta y is. Yes? So if this is y changes? It, do, it won't, it'll say x changes. 
So x changes from this to this, and so to figure out how y changes, you've got to figure out what the y's are. But if it had said y changes from blah to blah, then you would just use those values and not plug them into a function, because they would already been given to you. Okay, now dy, this is f prime of x times dx. That's this thing called the differential, and the dx is necessary. That has to be there also. So give me an equation for it. What is f prime? 3x squared plus 2x minus 2 dx. So now to find dy for this function, you plug in x equals 2. Remember, dx equals delta x. So if your x went from 2, two to 2.05, what is your delta x? How much did x change? Mm -hmm, 0.05. X goes from this to this, right? X got 0 0.05 bigger. Okay, so our specific dy will be 3 times 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus 2 times 0 0.05, which gives us 0 0.7. Notice how this is awfully close to that, right? But this is this thing called a differential. It tells, it approximates how much y changes when x changes from 2 to 2.05. Now, which one would have been less button punching? First or second one? The second's a lot less button punching, isn't it? It also is a lot less decimal keeping track of, right? And keeping track of decimals for the computers is really computationally expensive. So, and there can be inaccuracies introduced by rounding. Okay, and so what do you think is going to happen to this value and this value as the change in x gets smaller? They get closer together. So the next question is going to have. Notice how these x's are closer together, right? Yes? Is there going to be a point at which it doesn't work because the, the change or the distance between x is too great? It will always, yeah, there'll be a point at which it's not accurate, it's not very accurate because your, your difference in x's is too great, at which point you probably pick, you, just, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't do it. You just do it when, x's, when they're close together. So delta y, that will be plug in 2.01 minus plug in 2. And I'll just tell you what I got for that. I got 0 0.14071. And dy is f prime of x dx. And I'll send you some for 3.9. Or 3.10. It's constant twice. They'll probably be more on the applied side because WebAssign can do the find the differential is just kind of like a review of derivative rules, right? Yeah. Okay, that's it.